Hi first grade, welcome back to Balance Literacy today. And today we are going to be continuing our book, Henry and Mudge, the first book. Similar to what we did yesterday, we're going to be focusing on some writing strategies as we're reading. Now this author, Cynthia Ryland, you've been talking about a lot with Miss Pillion because she's a really great author of realistic fiction. And she does some of the strategies in her writing that we are trying to include in our own. So as we read this book today, we're going to be focusing on some of the writing strategies that she uses that we can also use. So Miss Pillion has taught us about some different strategies, some different things to add, and I want to focus on two of them today. The first one is patterns, and the second one is telling all about the character. Now, if we come across across the part in the book where you see a pattern, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you come across a part in the book where we're learning more about the character and giving lots of details about the character, go ahead and touch your nose. All right, let's get started reading or continuing to read Henry M. Mudge, the first book. Let me just find where we left off, and here we are. Henry used to walk to school alone. When he walked, he used to worry about tornadoes, ghosts, biting dogs, and bullies. He walked as fast as he could. He looked straight ahead. He never looked back. But now, he has... Now... He walked to school with Mudge. And now when he walked, he thought about vanilla ice cream, rain, rocks, and good dreams. He walked to school, but not too fast. He walked to school, and sometimes backward. He walked to school and patted Mudge's big head happy. I'm also noticing a pattern here. The author is including all of the ways that Henry walks to school with Mudge. He walks not too fast, sometimes backwards, and also sometimes patting Mudge's big head. So this is something that Cynthia Ryland includes because it tells us all of the ways that Henry likes to walk to school with his dog Mudge. It really helps us learn more about this character. Let's continue reading. Mudge loved Henry's room. He loved the dirty socks. He loved the stuffed bear. He loved the fish tank, but mostly he loved Henry's bed. I'm also noticing this pattern. And this is such a cool pattern, and I love that Cynthia Ryland did this because she's telling us all about Mudge. We're now learning all of the things that Mudge loves, and then we're learning about the thing that he loves the most. Just like Miss Pillion taught us in one of our videos, how maybe you could say he was worried he was going to get hurt or he was worried he would fall, but he was most of all worried about getting lost. So you can really learn more and more about the character and maybe what they like or how they're feeling by including these patterns. And we're learning a lot about Mudge here. Let's take a look at the pictures. His dirty socks, stuffed bear, the fish tank, and Henry's bed. Because in Henry's bed was Henry. Mudge loved to climb in with Henry. Then he loved to smell him. That's something we know dogs love to sniff things. He smelled his lemon hair. He smelled his milky mouth. He smelled his soapy ears. He smelled his chocolate fingers. 
You're right, this is another pattern, isn't it? And what is this teaching us all about? What is this telling us more about? What are we learning about the character Mudge here? Go ahead and whisper it into your hands. Yeah, we're learning about all of the things that he likes to smell. And not only are we learning about the things that he likes to smell, Cynthia Ryland also includes how those things smell. She's very descriptive about his, how his hair smells and how his mouth smells. So she says his hair, he smelled his lemon hair. So she's being very descriptive. I bet if we closed our eyes, we could kind of smell and imagine that Henry's hair smells like lemons or that his mouth smells like milk. Maybe he has a little milk mustache and that his ears smell like soap. So maybe he just took a bath before bed and that his fingers smelled like chocolate. Maybe he stuck some chocolate and ate it before bed also. So do you see how the, how Cynthia Ryland includes these descriptive words, these describing words, to tell us more about the story. Now we can use our imagination to think, hmm, okay, why does his hair smell like lemons? Or why does his mouth smell like milk? It's a great thing that she does, and that's something good writers do. Then he put his head by Henry's head. He looked at the fish tank, he looked at the bear, he looked at Henry, he licked him, and he fell asleep. Yes, that's another pattern that is happening. She's telling us all of the things that Mudge looked at before he fell asleep. And that tells us more about what Mudge is doing. So that really brings the character Mudge to life. If we close our eyes, let's try it. Close your eyes and let's see if we can kind of play a movie in our minds and visualize Mudge doing these things. He looked at the fish tank. He looked at the bear. He looked at Henry. He licked him and he fell asleep. All right, open your eyes. Give me a thumbs up if you visualized or pictured in your mind Mudge doing all of these things. Awesome. I also pictured it, and that means that the author, Cynthia Ryland, did a great job really bringing the characters to life, and she unfroze them. All right, friends, thank you so much for reading with me today. I hope you're really enjoying this story, Henry and Mudge, the first book, and maybe you're going to try some of the strategies we talked about today in your own writing to try to maybe be like this amazing author, Cynthia Ryland. All right, friends, have a really great day, and I will see you later. Bye.